Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Notes from the Sewing Room. If you are new here, my name is Becky and thanks very much for tuning in today. Today's video is about some fabrics that I picked up in January. I've had a little bit of a fabric haul, so I really wanted to pop onto my channel and share with you some of the fabrics that I picked up and so some of my sewing plans for the next few weeks as well. So if that's something that does interest you, please do stay tuned and I shall tell you what my plans are. My channel is all about my sewing, dressmaking and crafting adventures so if that's something that does interest you then I'd love it if you could check out some of my other videos here on my channel as well. If you do enjoy what you're seeing today then please also do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel not forgetting to hit that notification bell as well that way you can stay up to date with all of my latest makes and my latest videos that I'm adding to my channel. But um, thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed already, it just means a lot to me. So right, let's get to it and I'll tell you some of the fabrics that I've picked up and some of my plans. So I'm really excited about some of these fabrics. Now I do feel like I've been a little bit naughty because I did say to myself that I was going to sew up my stash really rather than buying anything new. But it's one of those things we're at home quite a lot at the moment and I found myself just kind of scrolling through different websites online and just kind of having a look what's around and I managed to pick, pick up a few bits and pieces that I think are going to be useful for other projects that I'm really going to wear for you know the next few uh, months and I do try and keep my clothes to be honest for as long as I possibly can until they're worn out to be honest so I will have these fabrics in my wardrobe for a long time I'm sure so let me tell you so the first one that I've picked up is from Higgs and Higgs and this is a sweatshirt and fabric and I'm planning on making the um, gathered sleeve version, or shall I say the balloon sleeve version of the Tilling the Buttons Billy Top. Now I'm sure you're actually familiar with this project. I've made it as a cardigan hack before. If you are interested in that, then do check out my cardigan hack video. But I picked up this fabric mainly because I saw that Sally from the Secret Life of the Seamstress channel had bought this in a gorgeous green colourway. But unfortunately, when I went onto Higgs and Higgs website, they didn't have any of the green available. So I decided to pick up the black version instead, which I think is still super stylish. It's really snuggly. The nice thing about this sweatshirt fabric is that even though it's a sweatshirt jersey it's not too thick and it does have a nice stretch to it because I find that sometimes sweatshirt jersey can just be a little bit too thick for me and it can make me a little bit too hot but actually I really like this one it has got a nice stretch to it if I just hold this up you'll be able to see it so it's got a bit of a stretch in both directions mainly that way but yeah it has got a little bit in the other direction as well but I just really like the kind of splash of kind of spots that it's got on that they're not polka dots as such it's almost like a, a doodle spot type thing but I'll just hold that up so you can see it but they have got this in stock in a few different colorways if you are interested in that I, I have kind of undenied about what I could actually do with this I thought could it make a really nice kind of snuggly dress but I think I'm probably going to get more wear out of some kind of jumper so I think the billy jumper is going to be great I'm probably not going to make it in the kind of straightforward out of the packet sort of jumper for this pattern if that makes any sense um, <laughs> I am thinking of doing a bit of a hack and just kind of reducing the length of the bodice a little bit to make it into more of a cropped jumper we'll see how that works out but um, I've been wanting a cropped jumper to go with my various high-waisted skirts so I think this could work out well so I'm really looking forward to sewing that one up and we'll see how it works out the next fabric that I picked up is a gorgeous green color I would describe this as a kind of it's kind of emerald green, but it's more emerald green on the back of the fabric, if that makes any sense, rather than on the front. But it's still, um, it's kind of a lighter green colour on the front. But I would still probably describe it as emerald green. So I'm just going to hold this up. It's a cable knit fabric, which I think is really nice. I've been wanting a cable knit fabric for ages. It has got a nice stretch to this um fabric as well as you can see it's a jersey um, I think this would make a gorgeous dress but I've actually just got an off cut of the fabric here because I am making a cardigan with it now I've been lucky enough to be asked to test a crafty so-and-so new pattern that's going to be coming out so it's actually going to be part of their one of their online workshops I believe 
but I can't say too much about it at the moment, but I'm making this up into a gorgeous cardigan. So I'll definitely share this with you when it's made up and I'm just looking forward to wearing it to be honest. I feel like I can't have too many cardigans in my wardrobe and this one is a kind of mid-length cardigan, kind of comes down to my hips and it's got two lovely pockets on the front as well, which are absolutely ideal for, you know, bits and pieces to be honest. I, I always need a pocket and I think most of you kind of sewers out there probably agree with me that pockets are super helpful and having patched pockets on the front is not something that I used to like, but they've really grown on me recently and I, I just think they're going to be really helpful, um, particularly being at home as a new mum. There always seems to be bits of things that I just need to kind of pick up and put in my pockets, whether that's, you know, a kind of dribble cloth or anything. So yeah, bit, bits and pieces I, I always seem to be needing to collect. So having pockets on the front just kind of gives me almost like an extra pair of hands that I can hold things in. So yeah, that's... um. I feel like I'm rambling quite a lot today. Apologies, I've not had very much sleep. So <laughs> I just feel like I'm kind of going on a little bit, but there we are. But I'm really looking forward to making this cardigan up anyway. And I think it's gonna be something that I'll be wearing for a really long time. Plus it's gonna be really useful at the minute because to be honest, it's absolutely freezing outside. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Plus it kind of puts a tick in the box. That it's the first time ever for me using a cable knit fabric. So I'm looking forward to getting that one made up. I'm probably mainly gonna make it on my overlocker here and um, probably just jump onto my sewing machine for top stitching the pockets and things like that. The next one that I wanted to share with you is also from Higgs and Higgs that I've, I picked up. And I bought this um, just ahead of Christmas, I think. I don't think I've shared it with you on my channel before. It's actually described as a lightweight stretchy denim fabric. But to be honest, now it's arrived, it's a lot lighter weight than I kind of anticipated it was gonna be. Um, but I was planning on making some kind of skirt with it, but I've changed my mind now it's arrived. And now we've got Christmas out of the way and I've taken my Christmas cushion covers off in my living room and my dining room and whatnot. I feel like my old cushion covers are a little bit tired and could do with a bit of a refresh. So I've decided to use this fabric for making some lovely cushions and I'm probably gonna add in a contrasting zip in there. So I have got, I think a meter of this fabric. So I'm gonna get at least a couple of cushion covers out of this, if not more than that. So I'll just hold this up so you can see it. Um, it's a lovely mustard colorway. Um, I think it was described as mustard on the website, although it is more of a yellowy mustard than a, a more of a deeper color, I think. And on the back, it's a slightly different color. So you could have a little bit of fun with mixing and matching the front and the back of the fabric if you wanted to. There is a fair amount of stretch to that, but I'm probably not gonna worry too much about that when I'm making up my cushions because of course cushions don't really need to stretch, but if they do, it doesn't really matter. I'm probably gonna make them, I would think, in just a regular kind of square, maybe 18 inches by 18 inches, or maybe 16 by 16, depending on the size of my cushion inners that I've already got at home. But I really do like making things for the house sometimes, and it gives me a little bit of a break from making uh, dressmaking items that I usually work on. So I'm looking forward to making some of those up, and if they do work out well, then potentially I might make some others in a contrasting fabric as well. So yeah, looking forward to that. I, like I said, probably gonna use a zip to close up those cushions. If I haven't actually got enough zips in my sash already, I may make more of an envelope style cushion and add on some lovely buttons, but I shall see and I shall keep you posted how I'm getting on with that particular project. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to show you is a fabric that I bought in the sale from Crafty So-and-So just after Christmas. So Crafty So-and-So have got a lovely selection of fabrics on their website, so if you are unfamiliar with them, then do check them out. So this is actually a French tech fabric so I have used French terry before but it's not a fabric that I use often so I was excited to kind of see that this one was in the sale and I thought I would give it a go I'm probably gonna be really boring and use a pattern that I've used many times before and I'm actually wearing a version of today and that is the Tilly and the Buttons cocoa pattern. Mainly because I have got a number of these different dresses but the other day I put one of them on that was a kind of um, black and white colorway and I've been wearing that dress for literally years and the fabric has gone really thin because it's just been through the washing machine so many times and I think probably it's at the end of its life. So I would like to make a replacement 
placement version but I'm kind of thinking that I might mix up the pattern a little bit and maybe change the sleeves possibly adding in a balloon sleeve um, maybe similar to um, the Tilling the Buttons Billy Jumper or possibly the um, Forget Me Not Patterns Vera Top because I have got that pattern now and that has got a balloon sleeve so potentially I could add that on here if I've got enough fabric I bought a meter and a half of this fabric and I absolutely love it. It's this gorgeous kind of red wine type color. It's got little birds all over it and little flowers. And as soon as I saw it, I just thought that colorway is gonna look really nice with my skin tone and my hair and that kind of thing. So it's got a lovely stretch to it. So you could make all kinds of different projects with this. Jumpers, dresses, all kinds of different things. I think it would be really nice for children's clothes as well, to be honest, because it has got that lovely stretch. And um, one thing that I've found being a new mum is that I don't really like to dress volume in things that don't have very much stretch because they can be very difficult to get on and off, whether that's kind of over the head or, or whatnot. So I think stretchy fabrics are definitely the way to go and I'm making things for William, but I'm probably gonna use this, like I say, for myself on this occasion, unless I've got any scraps left over and then potentially I might whip up something small for William, even if it's just a couple of little bibs or something like that. I am finding that I do need a lot of bibs. So we have got a fair amount, but I think I always need more. So any jersey scripts that I've got, I think will be ideal for making some little jersey bibs out of. So I'm looking forward to making this one up. If you have made any hacks of the cocoa top or the cocoa dress, then do let me know. I'd love to hear how you did it, what you did, that kind of thing. So do leave me a comment below and let me know how you got on with it and potentially what patterns you mixed together and what you found worked and what you found didn't work and that kind of thing. I do love to hear from you so I'd really appreciate it if you got in touch. So that's that one. The next fabric that I wanted to chat to you about is from my So Hayley Jane subscription box. I subscribe to the mini box, which means that you get one meter of fabric and three fat quarters. So I've got the fabric here to show you. Now I must admit, this is actually a little bit damp because it's just come out of the washing machine and I'm trying to get it dry on the radiator. But for the sake of the video, I thought I would just share it with you. So this is a beautiful cotton lawn fabric and I'm just gonna hold this up so you can see it. It's got a lovely flower colorway and it's a it's a lovely burgundy colorway as you can see and it's got a gorgeous flower design on it as well now i am planning to use this fabric for some balloon sleeves I've decided to mix and match two different fabrics. So I've already got some burgundy Ponte Roma. I've got about a meter of that. So I'm going to use that to create a bodice for a jumper. Possibly the, again, to be boring, the turning the buttons billy jumper. And then I thought I would actually mix the arms and use a woven. So the billy jumper is supposed to be done definitely in a jersey. But I'm thinking because the arms, uh, not the cuff, I must say, because I need to kind of get my arm in and out but the main part of the arm I was thinking that I might use a cotton lawn for because I just think the contrasting fabrics might look really nice together. I was actually inspired to mix and match a jersey and a woven fabric by watching Liz from The Baker That Sews so thanks Liz for giving me the idea but I think th those two fabrics are going to look gorgeous together and it's just going to give the jumper a bit of a different dimension kind of having not only the two different fabrics but the two different kind of colourways mixed together as well so we'll see how we get on it may not work out but I'm all for giving things a go and I just really love this as soon as I opened the box this time I just thought yes like this kind of gorgeous kind of burgundy wine colour is right up my street so really really looking forward to using this one if you subscribe to the So Hurley Jane box and you receive this one I think it was also available in a mustard this time then um, do let me know what you're going to be using your fabric for because you never know I might change my mind not decide to go for a jumper at all and use it perhaps for a more of a lightweight skirt um, perhaps a kind of shortish skirt I could get out of a metre of fabric or maybe a kind of summer spring type top. So do let me know what you're working on anyway. I'd, I'd love to, to know what you're up to. The final thing that I wanted to chat to you about today is something that I am completely unfamiliar with, but one thing that I've decided that I would really love to do. So I've been watching what Karen's been making from So Little Time over on Instagram, and she has taken up crocheting. And I have wanted to crochet for ages. Uh, my friend Adele from Button and Pip, she has also been doing some crochet recently, and she made a gorgeous blanket. So all in all, I've been inspired to give this craft a go myself. 
But one thing that I find is that I am rubbish at sitting down and just kind of following tutorials online and that kind of thing, sometimes because I feel like I haven't got the time or I don't put the time aside. So what I decided to do is join an online class. So I've signed up to the Crafty So-and-So online Learn to Crochet course and I'm going to be starting that at the end of this month and it's a four week course. I think there's basically four one hour sessions and it's led by a tutor remotely and I think that's going to really give me the enthusiasm and time just to kind of put aside to sit down, get out my crochet hooks and my crochet wall and actually make something. I'm really hoping that I can make some little squares that I can maybe stitch together to make a gorgeous blanket either for William or potentially if I made lots and lots of squares I can make a blanket for my own bed which would be really nice. So I actually picked up these um, balls of wool in three contrasting shades, I'll just get these out to show you and I bought them from a company called Love Crafts that I found online and um, they were actually recommended to me from Sarah from Crafty So and So as well so thank you very much to Sarah but these are gorgeous, they're in a chunky, they're called chunky yarn I think and I just thought that would be the easiest thing to work with in the beginning when I'm really not used to this craft. So I decided to go for three different shades, so I've gone for a bright pink which is just that one there. They are 100% premium acrylic, so that's that one. And then I have gone for this one here which is a kind of stone colour which I thought would be really nice and a deeper purple colour as well. So all in all, I think they are going to make a gorgeous blanket of some kind, whether it's a small one for a baby or a larger one for me. So that's all that I've got to chat to you about today and projects that I wanted to share with you. I hope you have enjoyed watching. If you have, then I'd love it if you could hit that like button, leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel, not forgetting to hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and to everyone that's subscribed already. I hope you've enjoyed learning about my projects today. I'd love to know what you're making, so do get in touch and let me know. But until next time, I shall leave it there and say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.